This lecture is part of a series for the Functional Anatomy and Kinesiology module in the UCD School of Public Health, Physiotherapy and Sports Science. In this lecture, we will review the osseous, articular and muscular structures of the ankle complex. First, we will review the osseous structures. We will begin with the osseous structures, and specifically the tibia. The tibia, or shin bone, is the largest of the two bones in the lower leg. It is subcutaneous throughout its length and can be easily palpated. The proximal and distal ends of the tibia are known as the superior and inferior articular surfaces. The inferior articular surface of the tibia is located on the distal end where it articulates with the talus. It is concave anteroposteriorly and broad anteriorly. Also located at the distal end of the tibia is the medial malleolus. The medial or tibial malleolus is the medially located rounded projection on the distal end of the tibia. It contains the malleolar groove of the tibia and the articular facet of the medial malleolus. The medial malleolus provides attachment sites to the medial collateral ligament of the ankle joint, specifically the deltoid ligament. It also provides an attachment site for the flexor retinaculum of the foot. The posterior aspect of the distal tibia is commonly referred to as the posterior malleolus. It primarily includes the portion of the tibia where the syndesmotic ligament complex attaches. Next, the fibula. The fibula lies lateral to the tibia. The shaft of the fibula connects its proximal and distal ends, where it articulates with the tibia. The interosseous borders of the fibula and tibia are sharp borders which run longitudinally along the junction of the lateral surface of the tibia and the medial surface of the fibula. The interosseous membrane attaches to these borders and connects the two bones to form a fibrous joint. The articular facet of the lateral malleolus is the flat triangular area found on the medial aspect of the lateral malleolus of the fibula. It articulates with the lateral malleolar facet of the talus, contributing to the formation of the ankle joint. It provides stability against excessive eversion of the ankle and foot. The lateral malleolus provides attachment sites for the anterior talofibular, the posterior talofibular, the posterior tibiofibular, and the calcaneofibular ligaments. These are otherwise known as the lateral ligament complex, which is typically implicated in a lateral ankle sprain injury. The lateral malleolus also provides an attachment site for the superior fibular retinaculum. The talus or ankle bone is a tarsal bone which articulates with the tibia, fibula, calcaneus and navicular bones. It forms the ankle joint, subtalar joint and the medial component of the transverse tarsal joint. The talar dome is narrower posteriorly. It therefore fits more tightly into the mortise, creating greater joint stability when the ankle is dorsiflexed. The position of the talus in the mortise depends more on the medial supporting structures, which are stronger than the lateral structures. Therefore, the ankle is better able to withstand forces that stress the medial side of the joint or force it into eversion. Next, we'll review the articular structures of the ankle complex, and specifically the bones that comprise the ankle joint. The bony ankle joint is comprised of the tibia and fibula articulating with the talus. Together, the tibia and fibula comprise the ceiling or plafond of the ankle joint. The weight-bearing portion of the mortise consists of the tibial plafond and the tailor dome. Approximately 85% of the body weight is supported by the tibia and the remainder by the fibula. The bones of the ankle are held together by the ligaments of the ankle to form a mortise. The mortise gains its stability from the bony relationships of the ankle and from the surrounding structures. Ligamentous stability at the ankle is provided proximally by the ligaments comprising the tibiofibular syndesmosis, laterally by the lateral ligament complex, and medially by the broad deltoid ligament. Support is also provided circumferentially by the joint capsule. The lateral ligament complex is comprised of the posterior talofibular ligament, a strong, thick ligament running between the malleolar fossa of the lateral malleolus and the posterior talus. The anterior talofibular ligament is a flat band running between the tip of the lateral malleolus and the neck of the talus. Finally, the calcaneofibular ligament is a cord-like ligament running between the lateral malleolus and the lateral calcaneus. The anterior talofibular ligament, or ATFL, is the weakest and most likely to be injured during forced plantar flexion and inversion, followed by the CFL or calcaneofibular ligament, which is stressed during pure inversion of the subtalar joint. 
The medial ligament, or deltoid ligament, is a fan-shaped ligament extending from the medial malleolus anteriorly to the navicular antalus, inferiorly to the calcaneus, and posteriorly to the talus. It is comprised of the posterior tibiotalar, the tibiocalcaneal, the tibionavicular, and the anterior tibiotalar ligaments. The medial ligament is much stronger than the lateral ligament and does not permit as much mobility at the subtalar joint. It is typically injured during forced eversion and dorsiflexion of the foot. Note that it will be important for you to know the specific origins, insertions, nerve supplies and actions of the muscles discussed in the forthcoming slides, but that these will not be explicitly defined. For descriptive purposes, the muscles of the leg are divided into three distinct compartments. The muscles of the anterior compartment, lateral compartment, and posterior compartment. The muscles of the anterior compartment dorsiflex the foot at the ankle joint, extend the toes at the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints, and invert the foot at the subtalar and transverse tarsal joints. There are four muscles in this compartment. The tibialis anterior is responsible for dorsiflexion of the talocrural joint and inversion of the subtalar joint. The extensor digitorum longus also dorsiflexes the talocrural joint and everts the subtalar joint. In addition, it extends the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the related digits. Like the tibialis anterior and the extensor digitorum longus, the fibularis tertius dorsiflexes the talocrural joint and everts the subtalar joint. And finally, the extensor hallucis longus dorsiflexes the talocrural joint and extends the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the first digit. Next, we will review the muscles of the lateral compartment. The fibularis longus muscle plantar flexes the talocrural joint and everts the subtalar joint, and these actions are shared with the fibularis brevis muscle. The final group are the muscles of the posterior compartment. The muscles of the posterior compartment plantar flex the foot at the ankle joint, flex the toes at the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints, and invert the foot at the subtalar and transverse tarsal joints. For descriptive purposes, the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg can be arbitrarily divided into two distinct groups, the superficial group and the deep group. The muscles of the superficial group of the posterior compartment of the leg consist of the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles. The gastrocnemius lies superficial to the soleus and plantaris muscles and attaches the femur to the calcaneus. It plantar flexes the foot at the ankle joint. The gastrocnemius muscle is divided into two heads its medial head and lateral head. The term triceps surae is the collective name given to the long and short heads of the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The soleus muscle is illustrated now. Like the gastrocnemius, it plantar flexes the talocrural joint, but unlike the gastroc, it can perform this action when the knee is flexed. Finally, the muscles of the deep group in the posterior compartment of the leg will be reviewed. The muscles of the deep group the posterior compartment of the leg consists of the tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus, and popliteus. They plantar flex the foot at the ankle joint, flex the toes at the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints, and invert the foot at the subtalar and transverse tarsal joints. However, the popliteus muscle, which also belongs to this group, only acts to unlock the extended knee during standing. The tibialis posterior plantar flexes the talocrural joint and inverts the subtalar joint. The flexor digitorum longus plantar flexes the talocrural joint, inverts the subtalar joint, and plantar flexes the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the second to fifth digits. And the final muscle in this group, the flexor hallucis longus, plantar flexes the talocrural joint, inverts the subtalar joint, and plantar flexes the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. And that concludes this lecture on the osseous, articular and muscular structures of the ankle joint. Please refer to the additional notes provided which outline the relevant functional anatomy in greater detail.